Hey guys, it's Short Devil here and welcome to my Switch Axe tutorial. For those who are new to this video, I will be talking about the mechanics of the weapon, combos, firebug attacks, switch skills and armor skills that I would recommend to use along with this weapon. For the beginning of the video, I will be using the base Switch Axe, meaning that I won't be touching on any of the switch skills until later on in the video. So let's begin. Firstly, let's talk about the mechanic of this weapon. This weapon has the ability to swap between either axe or sword modes, which is slightly determined by the switch gauge. Whenever attacks are performed in sword mode, energy in the gauge will be used. If the energy is either at zero or past the small line, you cannot morph the weapon back to sword mode. The energy can be refilled over time, or you can reload the weapon by pressing ZR to regain sword mode. Although you don't really want to be doing that because it leaves you open to an attack. Attacking a monster in sword mode helps build up the switch gauge into an amp state. Once the weapon reaches the amp state, any attack done to the monster, whether it's in axe or sword mode, deals additional damage to the monster. Basically, you want to be in sword mode to quickly reach the amp state and deal even more damage. However, this doesn't mean the axe mode is useless. You want to be dealing some damage in axe mode and is much more mobile than using sword mode. There's also the files that you should take notice of, as it will tell you what kind of damage you're dealing to the monster, on top of your existing raw damage and or elemental damage. There's six file types as of this recording. Power, meaning more raw damage. Element, for more elemental damage. Exhaust, to drain the monster's stamina. Dragon, Poison and Paralysis adds on those elements or status effects on the weapon. That's the mechanics. Let's move on to your opening attacks. Pressing X while moving forward performs the axe side slash. Nothing really much to say here, it just lets you engage the fight in axe mode. Pressing ZR switches to sword mode. This move is not really used a lot because it just morphs the weapon. However, if you move and press ZR, then it will perform the sword overhead slash. This is great for starting up your sword mode attacks, but as I already mentioned, if you have no energy in the gauge, then pressing ZR will perform a reload instead. Those are your opening attacks. All they really do is allow you to engage your fights in either mode straight away. Let's talk about your combos. Firstly, let's look at your axe mode attacks. While in axe mode, pressing X three times performs an overhead, side, and rising slash. You can continuously press X to loop between these attacks. Not really something that you would do in my opinion, because these attacks are kind of slow. Additionally, you can perform a forward slash by holding the stick forward and press X before doing the basic X combo. However, I like to use the forward slash to quickly poke the monster, rather than doing the whole X combo and potentially get caught by a monster's attack. Pressing X and A performs a rising slash. This can be done at any time or in between the X combo. However, you cannot perform two rising slash attacks. This move is good for attacking anything that's possibly above you. After any attack, holding the stick away from where you're facing and pressing A performs the fade slash. This attack helps with creating some distance away from where you're facing. A nice combo that I like to do is the forward slash, rising slash, and fade slash so that I can quickly damage the monster and get away from it, rather than doing the slow X combo and get caught by a monster's attack. Or you can just do the forward slash and then fade slash if you really want to do a quick attack. Present A performs the wild swing. This attack can be done continuously by spamming the A button, but doing this will drain your stamina. Obviously, when your stamina is depleted, you won't be able to continue this attack. It is best to do this move when the monster is immobile, because this move is quite slow and can get you into trouble if you're using this move when the monster is active. After the third swing of this attack, pressing X performs the heavy slam. Doing this move will allow the gauge to go into the amp state faster, which is indicated by the arrows next to the gauge. Meaning that whenever you do sword mode attacks, there will be more build up in the gauge. That's pretty much it when it comes to axe mode attacks. I mostly use these attacks to quickly damage the monster to possibly flinch them, which is when you get the opportunity to damage them with your sword attacks. 
Before we move on, let me just briefly talk about switching to sword mode. After any attack, pressing ZR morphs the weapon to sword mode and performs a sword mode attack. This morphing attack is the start of the basic sword X combo, which I'll talk about in a bit. However, after an overhead slash, pressing ZR will do the morphing rising double slash. Pressing A two more times after performs the triple slash and heavenward flurry attack. This combo is really good for reaching the amp state. Another move that changes the morphing attack is after a wild swing. Pressing ZR here does the wide sweep, but pressing ZR again will do the morph slash. This whole move here is really good at damaging the monster, but as you can see it has a long animation, so use it wisely. Now we can move on to the sword attacks. Pressing X three times while in sword mode performs an overhead, right rising and left rising slash. Just like the X mode attacks, you can loop between these attacks by pressing X multiple times. Again, something that you really won't be doing. You can also do this combo by doing the morph slash instead, which will continue to do the right rising slash and the left attack. Pressing A two times performs a double slash and a heavenward flurry attack. The heavenward flurry helps build up the amp state a lot more than any other attack. The best combo to easily reach the amp state is by pressing X three times and then A two times. You might also notice that the double slash changes into the triple slash. As far as I know, it seems like after any left rising slash, pressing A does the triple slash rather than the double slash. Additionally, after testing a couple of times, I found out that the switch axes that use the power files tend to take a bit longer to reach the amp state, whereas any other file can easily reach the state. I find it kind of weird, but I guess that's how it is. After any attack, pressing ZR will allow you to morph back into axe mode. You can also hold back the stick and pressing ZR to do the downward fade slash, just to distance yourself away from the monster even though it's a really tiny distance. Pressing X and A performs the element discharge. Nothing really special here. However, spamming X performs the element discharge finisher. This move uses up a lot of energy, but it can help with building up the amp state. It also automatically changes the weapon back to X mode. Pulling back the left stick from where you're facing can quickly end the attack, in case you need to cancel the attack for whatever situation that you find yourself in. However, if you reach the amp state, the element discharge finisher is replaced with the zero sum discharge. This move allows you to climb the monster and jam the sword into it before blowing up the attack, sending your character flying. You can also cancel out of this move by again pulling back the left stick from wherever you're facing. Unlike the element discharge finisher, pulling out early does not morph the weapon back to axe mode. Those are your sword mode attacks, mostly used to quickly amp the gauge for more damage. I should also point out that the sword mode attacks have natural mind's eye, meaning that you'll be able to attack hard parts of a monster. Now, let's look at your wirebug attacks. Pressing ZLX performs the invincible gambit, costing one wirebug. This moves you in a direction that you are facing, dealing three hits in axe mode. This move has knockback resistance, meaning that any monster's attack won't be able to knock you away. However, you can still take damage while doing this move, so I guess it's not that invincible. You can also slightly angle your attack using the left stick in either left or right directions, just in case you're just a bit off with this attack. Basically, use this move if you really want to get away from the monster, or if you want to damage the monster while still taking damage yourself. Pressing ZLA performs the switch charger, again costing one wire bug. Like the previous move, this attack moves you in a direction that you are facing. However, this move is only used to quickly gain energy for the gauge, and the energy will not decrease for a short time, meaning that you can quickly do some sword attacks without the gauge dropping. Additionally, this move does not have any knockback resistance, so you can still get hit while performing this move. I really like using this whenever I see the gaze drop beyond the white line so I can instantly get back into sword mode. That's your two wire bug attacks. Next is your switch skills. Slot 1 gives the forward overhead slash, which replaces your forward slash. This move has more damage than the forward slash, 
but it has a longer animation. Meaning that you're gonna have to pick out the best times to do this attack. Pressing ZR after this attack will go straight into the rising double slash. And then if you press A two more times, you reach the amp state faster. You open an attack, the side slash is also replaced with this attack. The compressed finishing discharge can be found in slot 2. This replaces your finishing discharge, which means that your zero sum discharge is gone. You can use this move whether the gauge is amped or not. Just like the finishing discharge, it can really help with reaching the amp state, but it does use up a lot of energy. This move also has knockback resistance, meaning that you cannot get knocked away while doing this attack, but you can still get hurt. Lastly, slot 3 has the Soaring Wyvern Blade, costing 1 Wirebug. This replaces the Invincible Gambit. Once this move launches you in the air, pressing X performs an advancing slash. However, if you're already airborne, pressing ZLX instantly performs this attack. A great way that I've seen people use this move is straight after a Zero Sum Discharge, so that you can avoid the animation of flying away from the monster and getting back up. Those are your switch skills, now which one of these would I recommend? Again, for those who have not watched my previous tutorial, there is no specific skill that you should definitely be going for. You can use any of these skills to fit your playstyle. These recommended switch skills are only based on my opinion, so feel free to choose on whichever skills you want to use. For slot 1, personally, I like the both of them. I like how quick and simple the forward slash is. I like to quickly poke the monster, especially with that small quick combo that I like to use. The overhead forward slash is good as well for its damage and easy way to amp up the gauge, just that you need to find the right timing to do that combo to reach the amp state. Both are just alright, it's really up to you whether you want to choose one or the other. Slot 2, I would choose the finishing discharge. The compressed finishing discharge is cool, but it doesn't cause as much damage compared to the finishing discharge. Also, you lose out on the zero sum discharge, which I prefer because if you know me, I love my explosions. Slot 3 would definitely be the Soarin' Wyvern Blade. This move is great to combo with after the zero sum discharge. Replacing the Invincible Gambit is not too much of a problem because you can use the Switch Charger for moving out situations if need be. Those are my recommendations for the switch skills. Finally, we have what armor skills to use. Again, I'll only be looking at the skills affecting your weapon, not the skills boosting your attack, like attack boost. Rapid Morph can increase the speed and damage of your morphing attacks. This is great for quickly performing your morph attacks, as well as increasing your damage when doing those attacks. Focus can also be used for charging the fill rate of the gauge. However, in my opinion, I don't think it's worth it. From my testing, I feel like it makes no difference whether it's having max focus or not. I might be wrong, but you could probably get away with one level of focus. So again, it's up to you. Power Prolonger allows the weapon to stay powered up for longer. This is really good for keeping the weapon in the amp state for a longer time. This just means that you're going to get more damage because of the amp state allowing an additional hit on the monster. Only when you obviously hit the monster. Stamina Thief can also be useful for increasing the ability to drain a monster stamina. However, this only applies if the weapon is using exhaust files. This skill does not work if the weapon uses any other files. Now I did say that the skills that I look here only affects the weapon, but I do want to add Evade Extender and Window here. The only reason is because this weapon has no shields, and the majority of these combos have a long animation. You won't be doing these combos because of how active the monster is, so having evade extender and window on can really help with avoiding attacks and distancing yourself from the monster. That's pretty much it for the switch axe. I'd say most of the times you deal damage with the axe to eventually flinch it so that you can do your sword mode attacks. Or you can just deal some sword mode attacks here and there to build up the amp state eventually. If I missed out on anything, drop it down in the comments below, I'm sure it will help someone out. If you also found the video useful in some way, give it a like and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. There will be more Monster Hunter Rise content to come. Be sure to also follow me on my Twitch, link is down in the description box below, where you can chat to me live 
and see me play Monsanto and any other games. Finally, be sure to check me out on my Twitter for any channel updates and other stuff that I like to tweet out. Thank you guys for watching and I shall see you guys later. How's it going? Oh fudge, I don't think there'll be water there, what the heck? Completely forgot about the bridge. <laughs>